Thank you for visiting my channel. I am the Actuarial Guy. Please subscribe to receive the latest videos from my channel. Alright, let us go on to Unit 3. Unit 3 deals with interest rates and our objective under Unit 3 will be to show how interest rates or discount rates may be expressed in terms of different time periods. In particular, we will look at how to derive the relationships between the rate of interest payable once per effective period and the rate of interest payable p times per time period and the force of interest. We will explain the difference between nominal and effective rates of interest and derive effective rates from nominal rates. Finally, we will calculate the equivalent annual rate of interest implied by the accumulation of a sum of money over a specified period where the force of interest is a function of time. Alright, uh, straight away let us go into nominal rates of interest and discount. Well, effective rates of interest and discount have interest paid once per measurement period. The measurement period is called the unit period, either at the end of the period or at the beginning of the period. In the case of nominal rates, the interest is paid more than once or even less than once per unit period. If we take the unit period to be one year, effective interest would be paid either at the beginning of that year or at the end of that period and it would only be paid once. But in the case of nominal rates where our effective our unit period is one year you could find that the nominal rate pays interest every month or maybe after every six months it is not set the interest is paid more than once per unit period. Now, the a nominal rate of interest payable p times per period is denoted by IP. So if we say that we have a nominal rate of interest of 24% payable, payable 10 times in the period of uh, in the period we're looking at, we will have I, we will have I. 10 to denote that the interest is payable 10 times per unit period. Well, we refer to, to this rate of interest as convertible peatly or compounded peatly. Now, a nominal rate of interest of 4% per annum, convertible quarterly, translates to a rate of interest of 1% per quarter. This interest of 4% being payable every quarter, we see that for every quarter we would have to pay 1%. So that for 4 quarters we get a total of 4% interest. Now what you have to keep in mind is that we are looking at compounded interest such that the 1% interest received in the first quarter would go on to be co compounded again for the second quarter. And during the third quarter, you will be compounding the interest received in the first and second quarter as well as the third quarter. That is how it works. Now, as a result, a nominal rate of interest payable P times per period, IP, is equivalent to an effective rate of interest of this, where you divide the interest by P, the total number of times it's payable. In our case, it was 4%. We divided it by 4. That is what I mean by this. Where the unit time period is 1 over P. In our case, the unit time period was 4, 1 over 4, of the initial time period. So for every quarter of the year, we can actually treat the 1% as an effective rate of interest if we are looking 
at a period of a quarter of the year. But if we are looking at the whole year, then the 1%, which adds up to 4% for the whole year, becomes a nominal rate of interest. Don't worry, I will make this clear later on if you haven't understood it. Now, um, when, when dealing with the nominal rates of interest, you can always convert them to equivalent uh, to an equivalent effective rate of interest. If you have a nominal rate of interest which uh, pays out every month for a period of a whole year, you can find an equivalent effective rate of interest which is going to pay out once at the end of that year. And um, you can do this by applying this formula here. Where, if you take this 1 to the other side, right, so that you have this bit here, raised to the power p, minus 1, this formula will give you the equivalent effective interest i. Remember that this p is the number of times per unit period of time that your nominal rate of interest pays out. Now, when dealing with, the, with nominal rates of interest, we have two options. For the first option, we can find out the equivalent effective rate of interest to use. And for the second option, we could use the Pithley periods as the unit time. Now, I will give you an example to make this clear. So, uh, in our example, what is the accumulated value of an investment of 1 at the end of 2 years' time at a nominal rate of interest of 12% per annum convertible monthly? Now, our nominal rate of interest is 12% per annum, but it's convertible monthly, which means that every month it, uh, the interest paid is 1%. And you're going to look at, uh, at this over a period of two years. So straight away, we go to option one, where we have to find the equivalent effective rate of interest. Now, the formula I gave you earlier was this, where our i will be the equivalent effective rate of interest per year. Our p was 12. This nominal rate of interest pays out interest every month in in a year in a year period of time there are 12 months so our p is equal to 12 now when we plug uh, values into this formula here such that we have our 0.12 as our nominal rate of interest divided by 12 and then subtract 1 we get that our equivalent effective rate of interest for a period of 1 year is approximately this or if you want uh, more digits in there, it's, it's that. So we can use this, if this new rate that we have here to find, out, to find out what our accumulation will be after two years. And to do that, we use the, comp uh, the compound interest formula which uh, I gave to you, which you looked at in unit two, which simply goes one plus i raised to the power n. Well, you have your C amount 1 and your interest which is this. N is the amount of time which in our case is 2 years. And so after 2 years this uh, amount 1 accumulates to 1.27 under option 1. Option 2 is where we use Pithley periods as our unit time. Such that uh, since the interest pays out uh, every month we use one month our, as our unit time so in total we have 24 months in a period of two years so using our 
using our formula from compound interest and using the the pithly period as our as our n and as the unit time we get that our c is 1 and then our i this we are actually going to use ip in this case because we are considering the pithly period as our unit time so in our case here we will have ip over p such that our ip over p gives us 0 0.01 that is uh, 0 0.12 over 12 so if we enter that into the formula and then our n is 24 months is 24 because uh, there are 24 months in our period of 2 years we get this which is approximately 1.27 now the value we've got here is the same as the value we got under option 1 this is a proof to you that the two rates are equivalent the nominal rate of 12% um, per annum convertible monthly is equivalent to the effective interest rate of 12% per annum And we've, with that, we have uh, come to the end of this part of Unit 3. I will soon be uploading the next video. And in the next part, we will look at nominal rates of discount as well as the force of interest. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, I am the Actuarial Guy. Please subscribe to receive my latest videos.